Hello everybody and welcome to the first Startup Grand Rush event of the 2021. We are so happy to see you all and can't wait to see you in person when it will be possible. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Alex Klonis and I'm Chapter Director of the Startup Grind Russia and Venture Partners at Seedstars. I'm also running the local community Startup Russia, so you can join if you want. I'd also like to thank Dennis and Ask VC for supporting and leading this fireside chat with Brian. Brian, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Uh, so, I would like to say a couple of words about Startup Grind and its values. Startup Grind is the biggest independent startup community with the chapters all around the world. We are connecting entrepreneurs and inspire them to grow their businesses. Our key values are making friends, not the connections, help others first, not yourself, and give uh, rather than you take. Without these values, we would just be a series of networking events, but Startup Grind is more than this. So, Welcome and have a great time. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. And uh, thanks Brian for taking time to talk to us uh, today about uh, Berkeley Skydeck. Uh, I guess we will uh, wait a couple of minutes uh, uh, before more uh, participants join. Um, uh, and um, a quick introduction about myself. I am a principal at uh, New York uh, VCA to be at Global Ventures, uh, and uh, for for quite a while I've been doing some education and um, uh, some education webinars for startups, uh, covering various topics on business, going global, expanding, raising money. And uh, today I decided that it would be really cool to talk to uh, uh, one of the top uh, U.S. accelerators, Berkeley Skydeck, and to learn more what, what they're exactly looking for and how they can, could help out uh, international startup uh, to expand to the U.S. Uh, and uh, here we have uh, Brian. Brian, maybe you could do your short introduction about yourself. Or, uh, and uh, about uh, Berkeley Skydeck? Yeah, happy to do that. Um, and, and thanks for joining everybody. Um, I'm Brian Bordley. I'm a principal with the Berkeley Skydeck Fund, which is uh, the partner investment firm of uh, Skydeck Accelerator. Um, you know, a little bit of my background, and I can talk more about the program, but um, I, I worked in at, I think, five startups before I joined a venture firm. Um, several had exits. Um, one of them is, a, is about to IPO. Um, and I did also spend some time as a founder myself um, back in right after college. I, I founded a 3D printing company. Um, Skydeck itself, you know, we, we operate a, a venture fund and there is a, an accelerator really focused on helping um, international companies um, access Silicon Valley, get the right advisors here. Um, find new customers here, maybe build a, a small business development team or, or marketing team out here. Um, and then after kind of our program, we, we really help our teams make sure that they're raising money from um, the top seed firms in, in Silicon Valley. Um, I, our fund is backed by Sequoia Capital. So they, uh, you know, best in our firm. Um, so, you know, in order to help us find a lot of new companies that potentially they could invest in, um, as, as well as a variety of other um, VCs are our investors in our fund. Um, and you know, the big, I think, news is, you know, our, our next applications are opening up on, on January 25th. Um, the program starts in May, so we're you know, looking to further get the word out there to, to more you know, entrepreneurs in Russia um, and the region. And we've, I think at this point, backed four, five other Russian teams. Um, so, you know, we are an active investor in, in companies from the region and, and I've really been impressed by um, not just the technical talent from the region, but, but also the, the founders and ability to, to hustle, to close customers and to really build uh, good teams. Yeah. And by the way, we have uh, uh, mutual investments with you guys as well. So. Yes, we do. <laughs> First yeah. of many, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, um, you know, uh, when I hear about Skydeck, the first thing comes to mind is that you're a deep tech accelerator and deep, uh, deep tech focused fund. So tell me about your current investment focus uh, and what types of technologies are and the startups and business models are a good fit for you. 
uh, what are not, so that our participants understand if they are. Yeah, so we, I mean, we definitely do um, a little bit of, of everything. Um, you know, I, I do think we have an expertise and a nice focus on, on deeper tech or, or more, you know, IP driven businesses. About 40% of our teams or so are our PhD led or, or there's a PhD on the co-founding team. But of course that means there's 60% that aren't. Um, so, you know, really from a breakdown standpoint, you know, we're looking at typically I think about 40 to 50% of our companies are, are enterprise um, focused or B2B focused. 20% um, or so are life science focused. 20% um, are hardware. And then we have anywhere between, yeah, 10 to, to about, I would say 10 to 15% um, really focused on um, consumer technology. So we definitely do a little bit of everything. You know, I think what we're really looking at is, is you know, first and foremost, um, you know, we look for great founders. Uh, I, I'd say that that's, the, I think, the overriding commonality amongst um, Skydeck teams is just the quality of our founders, the, the ethos of our founders, um, who they are. Um, after that, I would say we're looking generally for um, one of two things to really impress us. Um, and it could be both. Um, you know, we're either looking for some very, very interesting technology, um, you know, and or um, some 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 pretty interesting traction. You know, I think for 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 a, a handful of our especially more consumer focused teams, you know, they've come into us with to us with thirty thousand dollars a month, fifty thousand dollars a month, uh, even even sixty thousand dollars a month in revenue before the program. Um, so we're looking at kind of like, is there a really unique IP? And, you know, I would say the more unique IP, maybe the less traction we might need, the more it looks like maybe a consumer business or a regular um, B2B business. Um, you know, we probably want to see more traction. And then we are, you know, I think looking for that venture scalable market, right? What is this um, overall market size? Um, and, and, you know, is there the ability to generate one, two, five billion dollars a year eventually in revenue? Um, you know, that might be split across, you know, several competitors. Um, but, but you know, is there that kind of venture scale to that market? That's, I think, really what we're focusing on. I mean, for us, I think we think that product um, still needs time to, to learn. Um, maybe about a third of our teams really have product market fit. You know, if, I guess if we exclude life science, because that's really, you know, a whole different game. You know, yeah, probably about half our teams have product market fit and half of them are very close to it. Um, so, so that's kind of you know, something that we can play around with a little bit. Same with business model, you know, that's something that we really encourage our teams to learn, talk to customers about. Um, you know, those things are very flexible. While the team, you know, the the, the core technology, um, the and the market size, those are things that we kind of you know are maybe a little less flexible about in some way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you know, expanding on the the, the, the my previous question is, uh, um, uh, you know. Speaking of the traction and how the team look like or the, the startup business look like, what would be would be a good fit or what would be would be too early for you to for them to apply to the program? And maybe yeah. maybe some some red flags which or not not red flags but uh, uh, what is not a good fit like so so the, the yeah can... I mean as I said everyone you know, even if you're very very early please do apply. I mean, we definitely take a, a couple very early teams that we just really, really like the founders. Um, and, you know, it's very common for a company to apply to Skydeck uh, two or even three times before they get into our program. We actually have, you know, one company that I think they applied for the, a cohort in, in mid-2019. Um, and we stayed in touch. They sent me investor updates. And, and you know, now is the time that they're ready when their traction really grew. Um, so I don't think there's a too early to apply, but in terms of, you know, some data, at least, I mean, I think typically the average age of our companies are, are 18 months old. Um, so, you know, that means we have some six month old companies and we have some three year old companies, um, but kind of the average age is, is, is uh, 18 months. Um, and, I'm trying to think of other kind of red flags that we look for. I mean, I think the things that I think we most commonly will deny teams for is, you know, one, an idea that, you know, we think it's just been done. It really isn't, um, yeah. 
Um, and so if there's really no competitive differentiation, there's a lot of competition in the market. Someone, there's, there's someone in the US that really already owns this mm -hmm. space. I think it's very unlikely. Uh, it's, it's hard for us to invest. Um, and then, you know, I think the market size, the other big question, you know, we'll look at ideas and we'll say, cool, you know, this, 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 this is a very interesting business. And we could totally see this business generating $50 million a year in, in revenue, but we don't necessarily see how this business can hit the true venture scale, really get to that billion dollar mark. And so I think those are kind of the, the big reasons. I guess the final reason would be there's no, um, you know, CTO, there's no technical co-founder. If we don't see a technical co-founder, we'll also pretty, pretty much always pass on that company. I don't think we've had too many of those problems with our Russian companies, at least. Um, you know, a lot of great um, technical co-founders are, are from that region. Yeah, so, so sometimes uh, people lack uh, uh, strong business expert expertise, but when it comes to technical things, we, you know, we we'll, we'll like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't mind the lack of, you know, we, we, we don't mind the lack of business expertise. I mean, I think we very commonly end up with with, you know, technical CEOs, I would say, Gosh, probably 85% of our CEOs are technical. Um, and then, you know, we really consider ourselves to be the, the product, the business model, the go to market, the customer development experts. And so we, that's what we love. We love a, a, a CEO who can close maybe one or two customers and we're going to help them build processes and, 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 and a network in order to close another three, five, 10 customers during the program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about an interesting part. So how, how an international startup uh, can, uh, can, can benefit from participating in your program, uh, especially if they are expanding to the U.S. market, they still don't have a food there, so. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple kind of things to think about there. I mean, first, you know, the, for, our, our program has gone virtual. Um, I think that's, that is one note thing to really note. Um, the program is, you know, all of our education, all of our um, networking um, is done now virtually, which in some ways I think has been, um, you know, bad. You know, I think I think the big negative there is that um, you don't really become friends with the fellow co-founders in your cohort in the same way. It makes sense. You can't share coffee. You can't share beers. You can't cry on each other's shoulders. Um, so those relationships, you know, aren't as strong as with our in-person programs. But in many ways, um, I think a virtual world has proven that a, a community and ecosystem um, like Skydex is even more important to the success of a startup. Um, and, and the reason behind that being um, it, it's, it's harder to go out and build these connections uh, on your own. Um, so, you know, what do we think about for benefiting our program? Our program is, is, is designed to be a lot longer than a traditional accelerator. Um, you know, most accelerators are, are talking about, you know, you're three months, you're, you're learning some, some things in two or three weeks, you go to market for four to six weeks, and then, you know, you try to fundraise for two weeks and, and you know, you, you keep your fingers crossed. Um, and, you know, that's a model that, that definitely works for, for certain programs. We really, I, I think I can say this at least somewhat confidently. I've, I've been a founder. I've gone through three accelerators myself. I, I think we have the most hands-on startup accelerator probably in the world right now. Um, and, and the six months program is designed because we want our companies to have time to um, learn, to, to try new things. Um, we understand that building a network out here takes time. Building trust out here takes time. Um, and, and oftentimes the, 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 customers that our companies are working with it's you know it's not a two-week iteration cycle um, on customer development or product development you know it might take one two three months four months to to, to close a big customer deal um, so we want to make sure our companies have time to get that market validation um, before they go out and fundraise um, but in, in terms of like really tactical ways that that we help um, the first six weeks of our program, maybe let's call it the first month of our program, we really focus on kind of training our teams on, on the basics of Silicon Valley entrepreneurship, the language people use, um, the, the approaches we um, investors use to value businesses, go to market strategies, design. Um, and during that first four weeks, our teams get paired off with, with three equity free advisors um, that come from the Skydeck advisor network. And you can go to Skydeck's website and click the team tab and then click the advisors tab and see what we have. I mean, the founder of Tesla is, 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 is one of our many great advisors, um, founders of Guitar Hero, um, 
you know, and the list really goes on and on. Um, we have, so that's kind of in the first four weeks is, is, is just bringing on these expertise advisors. We have about 250. And, you know, I would just say we can't, you know, candidly, I think we have, you know, 80 to 90 really strong key advisors that, that get hands on with our teams. And those are all equity free. Um, to mention too, you know, we do have a venture capital fund. So the fund invests um, $105,000 in each of the companies that goes, goes to the program. Um, th there is a 5K program fee, uh, but if you get into the program, you are guaranteed the funding, though we do help our companies establish a Delaware company, uh, a US entity in order to invest, um, much like what um, Study Free has and, and a lot of our Russian teams have, have put together. And that's just kind of an important entity and we have legal partners that, that help out with that process. Um, you know, so the first four weeks is meet your advisors, it's learn, and then we really want to figure out, like, what do you need to do in your business to, to raise that first institutional seed round? The whole goal of Skydeck is how do you raise, uh, you know, it's called a two to, to five million dollar round of funding after the program. You know, maybe sometimes that's a million dollars and, you know, that that's probably okay, too. Um, and that's kind of the first four weeks, we, we say, hey, what, how do you improve your team? How do you improve your traction? How do you improve your product slash technology? Then over the next four months, we are utilizing the Skydeck network. Skydeck itself is run by UC Berkeley. It has great access to professors, to MBAs, to postdocs, to a large alumni network um, throughout the region um, and, and actually throughout the globe. And we help our companies you know, solve these challenges through um, the Berkeley Alumni Network. So, you know, typically that means, you know, getting a lot of customer feedback and also getting a lot of customer development. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for a team to come to us. Um, you know, I think uh, the best case scenario was a team that came to us from, from Armenia. Um, they had um, about, I think, 3K a month in revenue when they joined the program. And, and, you know, by the time the program was over, they were doing 25K a month in revenue just through our connections. And I think three months later, through many of those same connections, they were doing um, about 50K a month in revenue. And then they closed a, a seed round from a very uh, prestigious European fund. Um, so, you know, we, we understand that that there's, I, I think, a lot of fluff um, in, in, in when VCs say they're helpful. Um, and, you know, just to be totally candid, right? Um, but Skydeck has a really strong developed platform that every single founder will say, this is, this is unique, this is different. I got tangible value out of, out of the program. So after that first five months, right, we've had the training, the advisor matching, we've had four months of growth where, you know, we've helped you, you know, maybe find new team members, find new customers, um, get the right story into place. You know, that's when we focus on fundraising. Um, we run two major processes around fundraising. We have a, um, you know, pretty big demo day. I think it's probably the second biggest demo day in Silicon Valley. I and mean, I haven't seen the numbers, but it's, it's quite massive. Uh, probably just a little smaller than, than Y Combinators, um, but but I think that that's all right. Um, because what we also do is before demo day, we run a process where we having you know established relationships with a lot of the best VC firms um, in Silicon Valley, um, in in America, and now more and more throughout Europe. Um, these are the folks that can lead a seed round of funding. You know, they, they, they can cut a one, a two million dollar check um, and, and really kind of get that. And they don't need to, they're not followers necessarily. They really are the leaders. We know about there's 150 of them or so. Um, and, and we invite them to come to Skydeck before our demo day. And we have a matchmaking process where they get to kind of pick and choose their favorite teams in the cohort. Um, and they, then our teams get to pitch them with these 30 minute one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with just the investors who opted in. So, you know, we, we find that to be a very effective process. I mean, typically our teams are meeting somewhere between 20 and, and 40 really high quality investors before our demo day. Um, and then um, at our demo day, um, you know, they're pitching to 500 and, and, you know, maybe they're getting another uh, 10 to, to, to 40 leads from demo day. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, that, yeah, depending on the, the, the cohort there. Um, so that's kind of our process. And then once our program's over, you know, we, we, everyone's still really a strong member of our community. We have a very active Slack group um, that our alums and our teams help each other and our advisors help each other on. Um, and, you know, I think the reason why, you, if you want to come to Silicon Valley, you know, I think um, there's a lot of great reasons to start a company in Russia and, and to start a company in Argentina and Korea and, and really all around the world. Um, but Silicon Valley is really nice for, I think, uh, uh, 
three big reasons. You know, one, I think it really helps you think big. Um, I think over and over and over again, you know, we I, I see work with a lot of European founders, and there's there's so many talented people trying to tackle small problems. And I think that Silicon Valley, when you go through our program, um, and and you access the network here, you know, we really help you think big and get that venture scale story on board. You know, two, I think the U.S. really does have um, a very it's a, it's a large homogeneous market with a lot of enterprises and a lot of consumers. You know, both who have capital to spend on on technical solutions, so it's just a really good market to to, to go after. Um, and then three, you know, the, the the funding environment out here is is really unparalleled. You know, maybe maybe outside of China, where you know I think there's also a lot of good funding dynamics. Um, but but it, it's the density of venture capital firms. You know, there's probably more venture capital firms within a hundred kilometers of me, maybe seventy kilometers of me, than you know all of Europe combined and, and Russia and probably like almost, you know, Latin America, Canada, like put all those places, Africa, put all of them together and, and just this one little region probably has more venture capital in it um, than, than most world combined. And so that's just that density, that supply and demand mentality. It, it, it just makes it a great place to raise money and, and grow a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a quick question. Uh, so, uh, considering the, the acceleration program, how big is the badge? So it's so- Y Combinator has like 200 companies in a batch. Uh, what, what's your the story with you guys? Yeah, and you know, I think it's just different approaches. Um, you know, and if you want to really think about like investor theses, um, you know, kind of I'll, I'll share some information about how investors think, right? I mean, there's a general idea of investors, you know, do you want to, you know, invest in a lot of companies and double down on the winners, you know, at the Series A and Series B, and YC is a big continuity fund. So for them, their whole model is let's, let's get 200 companies out there and and you know, really back our favorite, you know, ten to twenty as they start to scale. I mean, maybe they would um, not like that characterization. Um, that being said, I, I I do think YC is a wonderful program. We've had our companies go through that and be successful. By no means do do uh, you know, as as a founder, I think YC is a, a really a lot of good attributes in terms of brand and and a, and a founder network. Um, I I think Skydeck, you know, approaches. Um, you know, we really think we we you know. And you know we're a venture fund. We, we want to make money. You know we we think we make our money, um, you know at that early stage when we make that investment in, in the teams. Um, and so what that means for us is you know we're not trying to invest in 300 companies and in, in the first you know in a cohort and, and and just only you know back our few favorites as they start to really break out. Instead, you know we we really look holistically at our companies. Um, we have a batch of about uh, typically about. Average is 20. Um, I think this cohort is, is is 14, so it's a little smaller. I think we, we chose to do that for some COVID reasons. Next cohort maybe will be probably 14 to 20 as well. Um, you know, we get about 1,800 companies applying, so it is it is it is quite competitive. Um, and yeah, and and the you know the reason behind that is we want to make sure that there's an excess of all the resources our teams need. In the program, you know, I, I can candidly say there are too many advisors that want to work with you. There are going to be too many um, office hours to go to for you. There are going to be too many MBAs knocking at your door, you know, asking to work with you. A lot of undergrads trying to work with you. Um, so that's kind of our approach. Is you know, we, we like to get very hands on with with fifteen to twenty five teams. Um, and you know, make sure everyone's really getting the the experience and the support that they need. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Uh, so, um, tell us uh, about the the whole application process, interview process, how it looks like, and how people could get prepared for 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 it. Maybe you recommend some resources. Yeah, Just, yeah. The, the the topic uh, with with YC in our region is widely covered, while it's not that much information about you guys and. Uh, uh, would like to, to learn more how to get prepared. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I think you know, I can share some general. Um, I also see. Oh, I see. There's some questions in the chat too. I guess we can get to those at, at the end of the the, the talk. As yeah, well. yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say you know, some piece of advice, whether you're applying to us or YC or TechStars, you know, I, I, I. I by no means do I think we're the only program out there. I, I'm biased, and I, and I think we, we, we have something pretty good. Um, 
you know, I, I'd say focus on five big things, you know, focus on, you know, I, I assume you already have a team together, not much you can do about that, but, um, you know, explain to us in a couple of sentences why your team rocks, you know, explain to us really, I think really explain what the problem is and who the customer is, um, succinctly, um, you know, talk about why there's a venture scalable market. Um, I think, you know, those are kind of some, some, some obvious things. I think the, the, the place where to really spend more time for our application is on, um, you know, what really makes you different? What is your competitive advantage? What is your cool technology? What makes you unique? Um, and then, you know, I think really kind of showing your traction, you know, how does your current traction, if it's unpaid users, if it's LOIs, if it's 5K a month, 20K a month, 100K a month in revenue, whatever it is, you know, I think really highlighting whatever you can do to showcase that people want you have. Um, I don't think enough founders really kind of, because it's, it's hard to close customers when you're in your early stage. So, you know, try to do anything you can if, to say that, that people want to use your product. So I think really focusing on those five areas is key. I think we have, you know, 11 or so questions that like, you know, require at least a paragraph response. I think, you know, those five areas are, are, are really important to focus on, um, you know, when applying to our program. Um, yeah, I think those are, those are kind of the areas I, I would talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, maybe any uh, any typical mistakes uh, uh, people do during applications. Uh, maybe maybe some technical. Yeah. Mistakes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's anything too different. I mean, you know, like I said, we, we need to make sure there's there's technical <clears throat> folks on the team. Um, that that's really key. So so just making sure that that that's there is is, is nice. Um, yeah, I think. Looking at that traction question, I think is really important. Um, I think that's something that I think a lot of teams who maybe don't have as much traction, but but have do actually have good customer validation, don't know how to formulate um, what they have into um, something that um, is going to de-risk their business. Um, and then I think really thinking through those those customer di those competitive dynamics. I mean that that's kind of I don't think there's a lot of typical mistakes, but I think those are the areas that. I'm most commonly saying, oh, cool idea. Oh, but look, no competitive differentiation or look, no one wants this. And, and so I think those like, you know, that's, I think for me, like the first path, if I read a one liner on the company, like literally it's, it's one sentence. The next thing I'm going to do is look at, um, you know, probably is there a CTO checkbox is a competitive differentiation you know, checkbox. And then, you know, is, is there, do people want this? Uh, you know, checkbox. And I think if you literally have a good one sentence and those three things check, at least from my investment approach, you know, that's who I'm trying to interview. That's who I'm trying to talk more to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's talk about the interview. So uh, suppose people apply and how, how, how long does it take uh, for them to get like in, in, in invitation to the interview and uh, uh, or rejection and uh, how the interview looks like how long it is. Is it a PowerPoint presentation on how uh, how it's look like? Yeah. Um, so you know the application is open on January twenty fifth. Um, they're going to close on February twenty second. So we keep our applications over about a month. Um, then we you know we it takes, it takes us two or three weeks to go through those applications. Um, makes sense, right? Um, and so. I think people should be hearing back about, I think we start our interviews in, in mid to late March and they go until mid April. Um, so we have a 20 minute first round interview. Um, typically we interview about 120 teams or so, maybe 150 depending on dynamics. Um, mm -hmm. That's 20 minutes, it's all over Zoom. And that one I think we're trying to, you know, I think one, just see how sharp you are as a founder. Like, do you have good answers? Are you elegant in the way that you um, answer questions? I mean, we don't care about accents. You know, most of our teams have accents. Um, certainly, you know, it helps to have a, a, a you know someone that call who who you know, does understand English well for, for for obvious reasons. But you know, we don't hold any you know communic some communicative differences against our teams. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think of that call, yeah, well, I think we're trying to really probably, you know, if, if you got an interview with Skydeck, it's because we liked probably one to three things about your business. And we probably want to clarify, you know, one to three things about your business. If those five things are what matter, right? Team, market, um, technology, 
competitive differentiation and and uh, traction. So I think we're going to spend you know our, the time on the things that we are most worried about. You know, you get an opportunity to pitch for five minutes. I really recommend to keep your pitch short. And you know, um, you know some, people, some people show up with with, with twenty page slides. You know, honestly, I say like eight slides at most is is not bad for a short pitch, right? Um, really try to tell your story very succinctly. You can always have backup slides to 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 answer questions. So I would want to, you know, just in general, I think spending more time on Q and A as an investment approach is a good idea. Then about maybe forty to fifty percent of companies who get a first round interview, we will um, have a second round interview for. Um, that's an hour long interview where we, um, you know, probably trying to get them to know more about the founder. Um, between that time period, we'll have done some some due diligence, and then we're really going to kind of want to um, just learn more about. Um, your business, um, who you are, and 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 I think in that second interview, also figuring out, you know, what can Skydeck do to help you. Uh, most accelerators, I think, they only do a twenty-minute first-round interview. So I, I do think we always joke at Skydeck, you know, everyone who gets to a second-round interview, we probably could have accepted because um, they were probably great. Um, you know, we 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 kind of just have a different approach because we like to keep our cohorts, you know, more compact, um, and. Yeah, I think we're trying to figure out, you know, what can you do in the next six months to 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 be ready to raise a two to five million dollar round of funding. So that's, I think, a lot more strategic. Focus on what do you what do you go to market strategies. Focus on 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 how you're going to answer these questions, and maybe we'll we'll, we'll dive into a little bit more around uh, the product and customer traction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, uh, the second interview actually uh, looks a lot like uh, you know. Uh, and a meeting with a with a VC, but you also do this uh, like mm, how we can help you part, which is really helpful. By the way, uh, should uh, should the people focus, uh, you know, stress what uh, their region, how they can contribute from uh, Skydeck uh, uh, in their applications? Uh, would it be a good idea, or it's it's not that uh, mand mandatory? You figure it out yourself. I don't know if we have a question for that. Maybe we do, and if so, you know, we, we care about that. I'm not sure it makes a massive difference to um, the interview, um, to the company getting in. I do think when we interview a company, we are looking for cultural fits. You know, I think Skydeck has a community where founders really help each other, and that, that makes a difference, right? I, I think, you know, especially when we start the interview process. Um, and we do a culture interview as well, so I think that's you know probably better times to stress how you want to contribute to a community as well. Um, it's not a huge factor, but you know I think I, I do think we like team players a lot at, at Skydeck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just a quick question: uh, um, uh, Could you recommend some useful materials resources? You have a pretty good uh, weekly email emailings. Uh, uh, for potential for, for, for people who apply so anything they they need to, to, to the, the participants of the webinar need to know about uh, who, you know information resources of skydeck uh, wh while they prepare or learn more about you yeah and I, I shared a link um, to our uh, one, of, one of the pages on our website about the global founders program now, I really think that covers basically everything about the program. Um, I, I wrote it myself after doing a lot of these calls and interviews, and I, I kind of just put everything right then and there. Um, you know, I think the thing to note for us is, you know, we, we do always invest 105 k into our companies. We always get a net 5% um, equity for that. It's it's very common for our companies to have already raised money at a four, a six, even a $10 million valuation. Um, so we are able to split up how we invest between safe and common stock, but we, but we do always take 5%. Um, now maybe I'll answer one question here from um, another Brian. Hi, other Brian. Um, he asked about you know, how do we work with health and biotech startups from abroad, um, and do we see barriers to working with them? And I think the answer is no. We love um, bi our biotech founders. Um, we are a very active early stage investor in, in life science and biotech teams. We have a dedicated um, advisor community, um, dedicated programming, dedicated investor community, all focused on life science and biotech companies. And I think in the last three years invested in you know, 20 to, to, to 30 companies that fit in that category. Um, you know, I, I think if you're looking at startup programs, you know, I, I, I think that um, 
you know, we, we definitely, there, there's great reasons to choose us. There's great reasons to choose, uh, you know, potentially look at look at Y Combinator or, or Techstars. Oh, by, oh, by the way, too, we don't we don't mind if someone goes through Techstars and and Skype at the same time. That, that's happened for our teams as well. Um, but um, for life science, I, I really don't think you can find um, anything quite like what we have. Um, I mean, I think all of what we do is very unique. But for but for life science, the the access to the um, entrepreneurs to the academics that we have in life science is, is truly unparalleled. Um, so I, I really encourage, if you do have a biotech startup, you know, we, we do therapeutics, we do health IT, um, we do medical devices, diagnostic tools, um, computational biology, synthetic biology. Um, so yeah, we are, we are quite active investors in that space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have the last question on my end and then we will move forward to the questions of the webinar participants. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit uh, the, the Skydeck VC uh, you're working in. So do you uh, focus only on backing uh, uh, the alumni of the acceleration program or you have a broader uh, focus uh, and uh, your core no, investing we, with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, we invest basically in the accelerator companies. So we invest, you know, if you get into the program, you are, you know, required and guaranteed to get money. It's, it's, it's part and parcel with the program. Um, and yeah, we, we put it, we, 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 we do follow on invest in, in the next stage of our companies. Um, not always, but, but, but sometimes, you know, if they're raising a seed round of $2 million, $5 million, you know, we might put another hundred to, to, to 300 K in. Um, but mm -hmm. most, most of our focus is on um, the accelerator companies and then helping our companies find their, their next stage of lead investor. So that's kind of our big focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Sorry. And the, the last small question, like uh, maybe you can mention a couple of, uh, you know, big success stories, big companies, potentially exits, uh, who are the alumni of Skydeck just for our participants, uh, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, I think you know, on the, on the bigger ones, um, I, I think you can um, think through a handful of companies. Um, Lime, I think, is one of the biggest companies that we that went through Skydeck um, back in twenty seventeen or sixteen. I forget the exact day when they, when they went through, like the scooter company. Um, you know, typically many of our companies are more technical, right? They're not the ones who make it to the front page of, of, of uh, TechCrunch. Um, but, you know, I think some companies that you might, you know, some companies you probably haven't heard of but that are doing quite well, like Symbio Robotics is, a, is an industrial robotics company. Um, Zendit is a large payments company in, in Southeast Asia. Um, mm -hmm. More recently from Armenia, there's a company called Crisp who went through our mm -hmm. program in, in, in 20... Um, 18 of our first cohort who's really been growing and scaling quite well. Um, we, we recently had a $300 million exit in a company called IOTA Biosciences. Um, you know, from, from Russia and the teams that we've invested in, you know, our fund is only three years old, even though Skydeck itself is about nine years old. Um, you know, I think, you know, probably, you know, you know I think Dosh is doing quite well with study free, but we had a company called Intento come through as well. Um, that that I think is 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 really doing quite well. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we I think a average follow-on funding rates. I mean, typically, you know, I think sixty to seventy percent of our teams are raising follow-on capital. Another ten to fifteen percent are are you know raising grant money or becoming profitable. I um, you know, I think we've only had about you know ten to to fifteen percent of our companies die at this point. Um, so you know, our companies are staying alive. They are getting funded. They are finding customers. You know, we really, you know, I think we really focus on the um, fundamentals of the business. But while I'm looking uh, for, for the I see the question. I, I see the questions. I mean, one, do we work in startups in the firearm industry? Um, we haven't yet. Um, so I, I, I don't know if we have a, a formulated thesis on, on firearms at Skydeck. Um, we have worked with several companies that work with the military um, in the U.S., um, a drone security company, and uh, a sensing company that's worked with with the U.S. military. Um, haven't done anything in the firearm industry yet, and I, you know, I encourage you to apply. And I, you know, I don't, I don't think we would not interview a firearm uh, company. I think we're always happy to learn more about about businesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Uh, another question is top five questions uh, Skydeck guys ask on the interview. I guess you covered them, but maybe yeah. Maybe I don't know if we have a top five. I think we spend a lot of time on, on competitive differentiation, um, traction, um, product readiness, technology, you know, market size. Those are the big things I think we, we look at. We look at. Um, you know, somebody else asked, "Are we going to help find a co-founder?" Um, yeah, I, and we help our companies, especially, especially our technical teams, find um, business co-founders or business leads in the U.S. Very common for, for that to happen. We even see some of our Skydeck advisors um, join our teams full time if 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 uh, the um, if everything makes sense for both parties. Um, so we, we definitely like to help our teams grow their teams. Um, our, our teams, yeah, find new find new team members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe while we are waiting for other questions, uh, there are there is something I uh, I forgot to ask, but uh, you you think it's relevant to cover today? Um, questions? No, I mean I think we I think we got to a lot of it. Um, yeah, I mean I think in general we we. Uh, We'd love to see you all apply to our program. We'd love to see you get the word out to a lot of um, you know other founders in Russia and in the region. I mean, we we are quite an active investor, you know, in, in those areas. Um, and you know, I think you know Russia and I think a lot of a lot of former USSR com um, companies. We 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 or countries we we back companies from those countries, from the Ukraine, from Armenia, um, and and so yeah, we really you know like to get the word out there. I think. We we have a really strong community, um, and yeah, we we you know love to see more more founders apply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and as as a wrap up, let, let, let's uh, once again repeat uh, what are the you know the deadlines and the, the yeah, yeah. To, to, to remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so that, so yeah, January twenty fifth is when the applications open. They close on February twenty second, and the program starts. I think on May. Third or fourth, it's, it's it's on our website. So right around that. Maybe yeah, one one of those. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so that's the dates, um, and you can find more information on our website. Um, and right now, even if you go to our website, there's an apply button that takes you to a type form, and fill it out. You know, at the very least, it'll it'll help me notify you about uh, the applications when they open. Mm -hmm. uh, here is one more question about geopolitics. Uh, uh, are there any barriers uh, for Russian founders uh, they need to keep in mind when they apply, or it's not that relevant? Uh, none that I know of. Um, who knows? I mean, stuff changes by the minute these days, um, as, as you all probably can see with America sometimes. Um, but no, I mean, we've, we've invested in a bunch of Russian companies before. Um, you know, so I, I don't see any reason why we, we, we couldn't do that in the future. Okay, thank you. And um, Maxim is asking, what type of visa will be required for the participants in the, in the program? Any limitations or visa questions they need to um, solve right now? Because currently it's quite difficult. So, but uh, you know, I am not the the total expert on, on these visas. All I know is we've had a lot of companies, you know, maybe COVID specifically is weird, um, which, you know, our, our program is virtual right now, but, you know, we've had a lot of founders from Russia, from, you know, other former USSR countries, you know, come here, get visas here, move here full time. We connect our teams to the right legal partners um, and, and such. I see a question as well about what the hot desk program is. You know, the hot test program is an incubator track program that's that's really just available for Berkeley folks, um, mm -hmm. and typically that's um, you know Berkeley undergrads. So it's not really relevant for for you know the, the full program and the funding, and nor to any of the companies here. It's, it's kind of, kind of a, an education. Right? Yeah, it's 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 a lot of students we're, we're we're helping out, or maybe a couple earlier stage teams or whatever it's going to be. Um, good. Well, I thank you so much for having me, Dennis, and, and I, I really appreciate being here. And of course, you know, I really appreciate working with you and, and hopefully we'll, we'll share more cap tables in the future as well. So I have, I hope that so. 
Thank when you, I brother. come to Russia, uh, you'll, you'll have to, when I come to Moscow, you'll, you'll show me around, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. Awesome. So, Brian, thank you for, for, for your time today. Uh, have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.